Steve Chase here. We're going to look at how to clean up the unapplied cash payment income using QuickBooks Online. So there are a couple reasons why this happens. One reason is that you have a payment that comes in on a day before or earlier than the invoice date. And that will often populate unapplied cash payment income with a balance of zero. So changing the dates to match the invoice date on or after it works to get rid of that unapplied cash payment income. And the other reason is that you could have an invoice deleted that had a prior payment associated with it. Well, if, if somebody makes mistakes and deletes the invoice, that payment still stays there. And oftentimes I've seen it where it's reconciled in the bank account. So you've got an issue there where we got to restore or repair that invoice back to its original form, some shape or another, so that we can match it back up to that payment. So let's uh, take a look and let me share with you how this works using QuickBooks Online. All right, let me create an invoice real quick here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do a $5,000 invoice. We'll make it January 3rd, 2022, but we'll receive the payment on January 1st, 2022. So a couple days before. All right, save and close. Let's run the profit and loss now. Reports, profit and loss, and we're going to go cash basis here. And there we go. We've got this unapplied cash payment income pointing at us right here, $0. Okay, so if you were to click on that $0, you're going to see the uh, January 1st, a couple of days before January 3rd invoice date. So. Uh, basically, what you'd want to do is change the invoice to make it match the payment date. That would be one way, or you might decide to move the payment date back out so it matches the other invoice. However, however best you decide to do that. Once you've got that arranged, and then we're going to not see that any longer with that zero uh, balance there. Okay, the next scenario is how do you... Uh, take care of unapplied cash payment when somebody makes a mistake and deletes the invoice. So I'm going to do that real quick. I'm going to create a really quick invoice. All right, Fibonacci. We'll just sell some licenses here. $2,000. Okay, and we'll date it January 18th. All right, imagine that you've received the payment. We'll just post it the same day. Everything's fine. Everything is great um, until we delete the invoice that had the payment. So let me do that real quick here so we can click reopen that invoice. 2000, I'm gonna make a, a mistake. Close your eyes. didn't want to do that okay <laughs> so there we have a problem here so you can see unapplied cash payment income has two thousand dollars when we click on that two thousand dollars we can see we've got a payment but there is no invoice associated with that here the other way that we might be alerted to that is run the accounts receivable aging summary and if you see a negative number that either means you owe that customer credit back to them or that really is uh you know in this case an unapplied so it is interesting that their grand balance they owe is fifteen thousand, but this negative two thousand really needs to be applied to it to an invoice that was deleted okay so um to do a little investigation here um you would go to the audit log, 
and you would first try to discover if that invoice was deleted recently, like I'm doing here. And I can see who did it. I could view the history, uh, but there, there's no button that I can use to bring it back unless you have a, a wonderful tool called Rewind. And Rewind is one of my favorite apps because it gives me peace of mind knowing that if we make a mistake, we can go into the Rewind Vault, sign into Rewind. You do have to pay for Rewind outside of QuickBooks, but you would have the ability to click a button that would restore that invoice that was deleted with just a couple of buttons. Really phenomenal. Um, but if you don't have Rewind, uh, you would have to recreate that invoice, I imagine. You could view the history and see the iterations of it and see kind of what, what it was and all that. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just simply re invoice that Fibonacci guy here as best as I remember. Okay. Okay. Save. Awesome. And then what we would want to do is go back to the profit and loss report. That's one way. Cash basis. And we would want to open up that 2000 if it hasn't automatically been applied. You may have it applied automatically. And then from here, pair it up with that invoice that you have here associated with that. So save and close that out here. So that will take care of that, that business there. So just real quick here, a little extra tip I just thought of. If you go to the account and settings, you can see if you have a feature turned on that will apply automatic credits. So that would be under the, I knew it, advanced automations, automatically apply credits. So I have mine turned off on both the bill payments and the automatic apply credits. So um, if you realize if you have it turned on, like is what, what I'm suggesting is you might not have to really apply that, but be aware that there are um, some more troubleshooting on trying to get the correct bill payment or the correct invoice payment associated with it. So anyways, thanks for watching guys and stay tuned for the next video.